The following presentation shows a critical compressor condition caused by broken rider bands. In this event, the customer stopped the compressor manually because he heard a strange noise. Finally, he contacted the help desk of uh, Prognost, and in this way, I was involved in this issue. Um, another uh, manual data check uh, was, was done on the Prognost system itself. And finally, due to this uh, data analysis, we prevented another startup of the compressor. That was finally the option of the customer. Option one was to uh, stop the compressor, to check the machine elements in detail. Option two was to have another startup. Uh, check for the for the noise or wait until, for example, the higher temperature, which occurred at this time, uh, cause an automatic trip. The, the outcome of this uh, event was finally that the rider band failed. Parts of the rider bands uh, moved into the compression chamber. They moved into the uh, discharge valve and also in the discharge piping itself. Some details for the compressor itself. It's a piston compressor from GHH Borsig from 1974. You see some further details of the type itself. Important, it is a six cylinder machine, five stages. Uh, this event, uh, we are talking about this crank, which is the stage number four, five. Um, so on the crank end side, we have the four stage and on the head end side, we see the fifth stage where finally the problem occurred. The used Prognos system uh, is a, a Prognos NT with a silver machine protection rack. We, you see the sensor which I used. We have crosshead slide sensors, also cylinder vibration. We also have the rod position sensors, uh, dynamic sensors, dynamic pressure sensors, and also frame and foundation and motor vibration. So nearly the complete equipment of a typical Prognos installation. Yeah, back to the case itself. Uh, the following uh, pictures will show ring buffer data short uh, before they manually stop the compressor. So finally, this is the area where the customer noticed uh, noise or some special noise uh, in, in the area of the compressor and especially in the area of the fifth stage. The first picture uh, shows the good condition itself. We see the different uh, signals of the uh, cylinder number six. We see the rod position signal here on this, on this light blue color. On the left side, on the legend, you see the values itself for the proximity sensor, so for the rod position. Um, in addition, we see the cylinder vibration sensors, one sensor for the stage four, so for the crank end side, and another cylinder vibration sensor for the five st for the stage five, which is the head end side. In addition, what we what we are not seeing, uh, it's also displayed the crosshead slide vibration in blue itself. So the acceleration values you see here on the right side itself. We see the pressure of on the crank end side, which is the orange signal and the pressure signal of the head end side. For general overview of the signal, you see it is um, displaying the signals over one revolution of the compressor. You see the X axis is starting from zero degrees and is going up to 360 degrees crank angle. So showing one revolution of the compressor itself means you see here the compression phase on the crank end side, which is the force stage signal discharge phase, the re-expansion and the suction phase on the crank end side. In the same way you see on the head end side, the re-expansion, the suction phase of the fifth stage, the compression, and finally from this moment, the discharge phase on the fifth stage. This is for, for the short introduction of the different signals. Again, as mentioned here, we have the good condition and in the following pictures, we will see how the signal, uh, how the situation yeah, gets worse. Here on, we see the first indication, which are mainly on the very left side here, we see a late closing of the discharge valve. From the head end side, we see the pressure signal remains on discharge level uh, before it drops down to the re-expansion. And the second indication is uh, on the on the right side on during the discharge phase, also of the 
of the on the head end side we see the valve opening impact typically in this in this edge we have the compression area and in this moment typically the discharge valve is opening and the gas is going out of the compression chamber and what we see in this first indication is an, an increase here in this area if we go further uh, means 20 seconds after the first indication what we see here on the left side is that the cylinder vibration is increasing in this area area the late closing uh, is visible again on the on the pressure signal and the closing is, is yeah causing a vibration impact here in this area which you see here on the green signal uh, on the right side you see another increasing of the discharge pressure inside the compression chamber and what you already see is an increase this this line here is a static discharge pressure on the fifth stage and what you see is that the dynamic pressure is increasing to higher levels and now we go two further steps this was 20 seconds after the first indication 40 seconds you see even that the pressure is increasing and also some uh, vibration is coming up also on the head end side itself again cylinder vibration of the stage five and the last one 90 seconds even a higher overpressure of the dynamic pressure signal itself and what you already see we reach here a le level up to yeah roughly 50 bars already higher than the typical or the static discharge pressure and this is finally the area where the customer decided based on some noises uh, to stop the compressor and uh, yeah, consult prognost and ask the help desk for a second opinion and this was finally um, the point to to go in the data analysis and check uh, what trends show a deviation what can cause this behavior we were pretty sure that it must be something with the discharge valve itself then we we went through the trend itself and what we definitely see in the first trend which is the pressure peak to peak analysis it's based on the pv analysis of this compression chamber and what we see is that there is a strong increase of the pressure peak to peak the peak to peak means finding the difference between the lowest suction pressure and the highest discharge pressure inside one revolution or during one revolution and we see here that the the pressure increases roughly this 50 bars during if we look to the time period during let's say two to three minutes so a significant increase during very short time of course and this um, yeah typically was a sign based on the on the online signals we saw before that this must be a blocked wealth so the gas was um, was not able to to leave the compression chamber the valve blocked the gas flow and so this resulted in this high dynamic pressure inside the compression chamber yeah where we could see other indication the good indication is visible on the cylinder vibration of course in this uh, picture we show the 3d waterfall so the vibration of the stage 4 sensor and the stage 5 sensor so the relevant one is the stage 5 cylinder where we see clear indication here in this area uh, to explain roughly um, this is showing roughly one revolution we divide the online signal of the vibration in 36 segments we start here in the top test center with the segment one and then it goes up to this uh, segment 36 which is again the um, top test center so from here to here we have one revolution and here the area with the high vibration are the segments 34 35 and 36 and also visible the high vibration because of the, the discharge valve closing here in the segments one and two. And these signs were visible already 16 hours before. So even where, where we don't have higher pressures, even there, there were some indications on the cylinder vibration visible that the behavior has changed at least. A more earlier indication here we have the cylinder vibration. First, we see the cylinder vibration trend in another view, just the as a 2d trend you see just the three segments 34 35 36 and what we see clearly here is the, the 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 jump up of the signal so we have a pretty constant signal in the time before and then there is a there is a change here on the on the 20s uh, where the vibration increased uh, significantly
and these are this is the dimension 16 hours uh, before the event uh, finally the compressor was stopped there so but the point i want to make uh, was on the rod position this is what we see now here also there was um, an early indication uh, if we look to this area with this red rectangle uh, in the trend we could see that here there were first indication that something uh, or that the behavior changes that something happens and this indication was there already i mentioned it here seven days before so seven days before the the rod dynamic has changed so we have a rod position sensor which measures the vertical movement of the rod itself and here at this position roughly seven days before we saw a higher dynamic we saw higher peak to peak values in the segment in this case at segment seven and uh, eight so uh, in the in the phase of discharge uh, output on the head end side and this uh, comes up very clearly until the compressor was stopped itself as well here we have another view um, here the 2d just showing the segments seven and eight we see here it's a beginning pretty stable values and if we would see the trend before you can believe me it was pretty stable on the same level but here at somewhere in this area seven days before we see that the peak to peak values um, yeah show higher dynamic they are not stable anymore there is some deviation which indicates that the piston was moving in vertical position that there is more dynamic in the cylinder itself and in addition, these are here we're talking about the peak to peak values. In addition, we see here the the average position. So same sensor measuring just the distance or measuring the average position of the rod itself. And here I took a longer trend period. And what you see is here the, the pretty stable um, behavior the weeks before. And here at the also already mentioned point, we see that the average position of the rod is changing. Yeah, you can see it here in this area. It is somewhere around this, this gray line in the background. And from here, you see that it moves away from this, from this gray line. So you see some deviation. You see the piston is lifted up and, uh, and there is definitely a higher dynamic in the system itself, which could, of course could also uh, be a consequence of, of loose parts in the compression chamber, which was finally found at the end itself. Yeah, to be complete, uh, in the next picture, we see the cross head slide vibration. There are no big indications or big influences seen on the cross head slide vibration sensor. Uh, this is what you see in this waterfall plot, which is already zoomed in very much, but there is, there is no, no big indication and no big vibration increase. This is also a reason why there was no alarms in the prognost itself, because typically on the cross head slide vibration, which is a safety center, there was no, no big vibration. And the other one, for example, the rod position, it was not in alarm region yet. So coming to the, to the temperature measurement, this was an indication the customer gave at the very beginning that he said, um, we see a change in temperature, but it's not that big that we would have to stop or that an automatic uh, shutdown should be should be happen quick and this is what we also saw in our system if we now compare the same operating condition this is a little bit difficult all these yellow flags show condi um, operating condition changes if we remain in the same operating condition you see here a very constant level between 111 and 140 maybe and finally the values if we compare this area with this we could see a small increase but just a few degrees celsius not not really important and of course even here short before the compressor was stopped the values were not that high that an automatic trip by the customer uh, control system would be initiated so we were still far away to to have an automatic trip yeah this um, to to conclude uh, the 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 trend data in the prognos system so there are indication but no alarm and this is what finally the summary is there was a sig significant damage of the rider bands they were yeah worn out they were loose there were a lot of parts of loose rider bands um, this damage happened pretty silent and was without big vibration without high temperatures the visualization of monitoring data so having different uh, monitoring parameters like vibration like rod position but also the pressure indications 
they can have an additional benefit in, uh, in look to just fixed trip settings like we would have with vibration or temperature. This additional monitoring data, this helped in this situation to avoid a secondary damage, to avoid another startup and to wait until you really have high vibration or you really receive high temperatures. Yeah, for the future, what could be a learning from this would be uh, to, to use this warning thresholds, maybe together with the third warning output to, to use a relay output, which for example, in the Prognos system uh, is available and to just highlight this critical condition proactively to an operator. Of course, you, we saw this time ranges. We talked about two to three minutes, the pressure sensors. We talked about just 16 hours, which is, which is really not much for cylinder vibration. So to, to um, always look in the Visu in, in this time period, of course, it's difficult if you have such an issue during the weekend, maybe no one is looking to Visu, but this approach to have maybe an, an proactive information to highlight such a situation could help. And this um, could be an independent and active monitoring tool to inform operators to may initiate some operator action. In addition to, of course, the necessary machine protection system, which yeah, protects the machine in, in the case of a catastrophic uh, condition, what we don't had in this situation. This is um, the presentation so far. Thank you so far. And uh, I think we now can come to the question and answer session. And I really look forward to get your questions and uh, yeah, let's discuss in detail.